Welcome to this first of the Poetry and Music series. I'm Edna Sessian, director of the center. Uh, David, Pol David Pollens will, uh, David Pollens, who is in charge of the poetry program for the Helix Center, will introduce today's program and maybe he'll tell you something about what else he has planned. I don't know. He hasn't uh, given me his uh, copy of his comments. <laughs> Uh, as I said yesterday, uh, we are having a benefit at the end of the month, but those of you who can't come, any donation of any size is welcome. So with that, Dave. Thanks, Ed. Well, as, as Ed mentioned, uh, this is the first of our poetry events at Helix, and I'm David Pollins, and uh, we have a committee of people who have been helping and providing suggestions. I'll mention their names. Um, <clears throat> Heather Dubnow, Rachel Haddis, Henry Levine and Polly Rosenweg are all on the Poetry Committee and are all helping to organize the events. We're hoping to have um, three, possibly four more events between now and the summer. Uh, the next thing that'll be coming up in the winter is gonna be a round table on classical Urdu poetry and Ghalib. Um, and then a little bit later on in the spring, we're gonna have a round table on ancient Mayan poetry and the Popol Vuh. And there are some other roundtables in the works, and you know we'll let you know about them as they develop. So we have two very special artists with us today, Sean Singer, who won the Yale Younger Poets Prize and the Norma Farber Award from the Poetry Society of America for first book of poems, and Lewis Porter, a wonderful, wonderful jazz musician and preeminent jazz musicologist. Uh, did you bring CDs with you today, or oh. no? <laughs> okay, well, uh, the Coltrane biographies... I could, go, I could go get it. Okay, the Coltrane biography is on sale outside, and so is uh, Sean Singer's book of poems. Uh, so if you're interested, please please buy them. Um, so I'll, I'll segue poetically uh, to their collaboration today. Um, I wonder if they'll help us to answer a question posed by Sean in his poem, Inside the Keith Jarrett Trio. He asks... How does a hollow bone in your head trace clear purple wavelets from waves of pain? So we're gonna go for about an hour and 15 minutes, and we'll stop and we'll have participation, uh, questions, comments from the audience. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for coming, nice to see you. Um, should we then just start? record rolled out of the hot machine the scully automated lathe covered in oil rigged to the metal ends dying of spin metal on black back to back thimble weights diamond and rinse to a new shine lunge and pull into circles hundred grooves to the centimeter calling it vinyl midnight candle drops onto the place with the push of the nigifigous chirping needle a bell crank lead plant resting in a red scissor over the lumps of steel then rising with throstle smoke, jazz dust. Grumbly with the blues, the old rumor monger taking us to the juke, the bambara word that is wicked. Bouncing resin polymer, lost to the racy suff. Baby, she got a phonograph, it won't say a lonesome word. She got a phonograph and it won't say a lonesome word. What evil have I done? What evil has the poor girl heard? Photo of Coltrane, 1963. Otherworldly and outreaching, a Parnassus of noise with the serious glint of an estimable worry on his face. 
O oh, Coltrane, what will ring from your pious, gleaming Antillian euphonia, so capable, swift, with no trace, no trace of stillness? The blur of the gray, gray, and gree, gree flows hornward to the black bell of the saxophone, a cylinder of joy, an empurpled sea of heaven ebbing into hell. I'll try to do that. It's a small place here. Okay. You can maybe even not amplify the piano. Just use the natural sound of the piano. Right? Oh, so you don't want to hear the piano? No, we didn't. Naturally. I sent you an email. Sound check before the next poem. Just no, this, this is clearer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now do it with me. Okay. <laughs> Billy later. Wounds etch themselves above and below, drink sober lungfuls of hush. Blood soap and well, the threadbare noises of an amber tube and a bird. Welcome to the district of snow loneliness. My list. A towel for redness, taboos for my doll, spasms of a man. Something emerges from a cord, a pigeon egg, snow silent, resilient, secret, holding its hand toward you, holding its pink spotlight, finding a Roosevelt dime. I wake up to a new sun, a clear and tender quiet in each bone. Lily blue as mama's china berry tree ain't greased since the big bean caught a knot in the early black back of the club so thick with smoke and lady up front blowing blues till my hair hurts spurts of shying some timey trouble you know in the black fracture of night she's back hop dog cutie killer diller face like a brown egg begging the black like jack the bear there lady baby color of a chocolate dress juicy lucy the shazam do a bang bang outflow sensation called yes I had too many husbands. Last one beat me black and blue. Then he was out the door, he said, baby, better me than you. I got good and drunk, I couldn't even see. No matter how much money I make, I've never been free. He used to stay out late, now he don't come home at all. I know by that there's another mule kicking in my stall. If you don't like my ocean, don't fish in my sea. Stay out of my valley and let my mountain be. Let me be your rag doll until your china comes. If you beat me ragged, I've got to beat you some. If he walks out the door, he won't be gone long. I'll be up on the stage in my needle of song. Scott Joplin. Son of a slave, your birthday is no more exact than a petal. Sunflower, you have no need to worry. Your piano rolls have played in middle and upper class homes. Maple leaf, across the plains where it is gold, we worry. You neither improvise nor play blues, but compose. Chrysanthemum, our ways of living differ like worry. The weaponized invisible boundaries of America keep you. Eugenia, there is a reason to worry. You were composing, 
but not recording, only rolls with holes. Lily Queen, others have been pieces of worry. The reason you asked and the reason I don't have the answer is the same. Heliotrope, let's just not worry. Syphilis with its attendant dementia, paranoia, paralysis, pineapple, your leaves each veer and heave toward worry. Magic. The exigencies of an interval, Igor Stravinsky. Or his gooey, nasty bone style with its slurs, gloss, and muskrat dust reveals a muskrat, an aquatic rodent, and its fur, all Louisiana industry before Ori relocated to Los Angeles. Thoreau described their nests not as things, but as dwellings, the border of habitat and town. The theme beneath the soli on dropping shucks with corn shucks in their outside maze used for toilet paper. Lil Hardin's feelings of revenge during their divorce dropping them on Lewis's head. The raw umber of marrow, a bone facing backwards on a horse-drawn cart when the sun sets, there is naught to do. I saw you with your sweet man last night and I know you wasn't true. for you. Blow powdered color through a straw. From the cave's vantage, feel the trestles and palms. Be the flash lab, see a ball slow above the plate. Be the flesh lab too, the cream of your neck, the portion near the ear. Use your stylus, have no direct hand contact. Recall that utopia literally means not a place. Punishment, write, I will not write this poem a thousand times on a wall. Then hinge that wall or singe it. I think of Maxine sometimes, her inky bob, Ramon's tea, and negative definitions. We would ride her blue Toyota behind the dunes. Clear cell cancer killed her years ago. She would take my hand in the mid-grade mall, and we saw our liquid happiness rising through bodies.
mountainous black garden. What good is intelligence if you cannot discover a useful melancholy? Reading grapefruit, pray in fake grief. Put on florette African and her arm drapes onto steel fibers along nerves. Her love fills the zinc bottle of its own body. Peel me a woody bass, wick the piano away from the sweet peak of Duke's pomade. Black can be quiet and contain the whole thing. What is a part, what is a part and not hard, and hard and not a part. Irvine, 1943 to 2002. Please forgive the long silence. In my gut, which is the blue flame of the stovetop, the broken lance of fear quakes my liver, and my name means not celebration and critique, but concealment, what the Dogon call Obia. And so I take myself into myself, that long ribbon folded inside the cowrie shell. I'm a massive animal. The torsion in the muscles of my neck serve up the image of a malcontented demon, and I suck my own grave through my sinuous mantle groove. Apotheosis of Sonny Clark. First, Tar's vinegar warmth, euphoria, and nodding off, followed by automat cheeseburgers and vanilla milkshake. The only black kid in the school picture, faraway swim look in the thread of his eye. Japanese love cool strutting, white legs, black A line, Fifth Avenue. As deems dow demons douse metallic nodules, a stylus pins Cole Porter in a Pullman quarter. What seems like a right hand with blue tabulae is actually Sonny Clark, 
waking up from his vomit when he sees what he's leaving behind. Only the right chord is perfect labor. Everything with Sonny Clark is weakness. He's a city in a forest in folded quill, tranquilized with the black lung and tar black, the most aristocratic color of all. There's no such thing as bop music, but there's such a thing as progress. Coleman Hawkins. Although jazz's sepia acetates and lacquers have dipped the black into silver nitrate and are faded little faders, they inflate like lungs. The pink lung, with its tortoiseshell shellac, appears to bulge, and its inseam exhales purity and inhales spoonfuls of tempo. Purity in jazz, sir, is thwarted and unutilized. 200 years of minstrels snapping their red suspenders corrode and oxidize the air. Mr. Tambo, what kind of a girl was she? Zip, she was highly polished, yes indeed, her father was a varnish maker. You see, that rubber pork chop became something. It's supposed to be funny, by the way. <laughs> Bechet's shimmy shuable from its mold has been heated and mounted face to face with a hinge so that the machine opens up facing you. It is not lighter or intermezzo, frozen like trout beneath the flux and ratamacuing of ice. It is, it is not alpine. Eingenschlafen auf der Lauer, oben ist der alte Ritter. Through the cracked photos breaking into creosote, superlatives douse the monoliths. Virtuoso, genius. But there is a siphoning off of linking, licking pink jam from the knife. Negativities. The integrated bands, for example, of alcoholics, Benzedrin heads, and junkies, or the deranged catastrophe of Buddy Bolden feeding his hand to a ceiling fan, or the wick saturated with amphetamines, or Buddy Rich telling the trumpet section of fuck faces that he'd plink them every seven bars like a neutered werewolf. When Coleman Hawkins stood half nude like a mango in Friedlander's photo, 1956, with his curved man breast sweating from it may not be true, he appears modern. He is not a manke nostalgic item, logistical. He, lung of air rate, propulsive tub, urgently pumping ninth as the living demonifuge ripping through a blanket of vanilla radio. Racial animus, intractable sources, faded scriptures, the pinstripes of the Storyville mudheads, midwives, and the peach tin types fitted into ladies' brooches are not jazz. This strategy does not puff the uvula's blowpipe or bring an axe to the vanguard. Rather, it shuffle bucks, pantomimes, and dabs slop with a hanky. Meanwhile, as the onyx rattlesnake of the century slid by 1960, the year the fedora went up the flue, jazz too opened like a fire in a woman's ceremony. It did not end. Eiler had yet to drag the black river of riv into rivulets of need. Unkempt skinny dips, red vinyl seats of the southern buses, and the vinegar cloud of the tree's harpsichords were made too of a jazz. As the bus ate the road's tape measure, the ballrooms closed, the Hickory House sewed 52nd Street into a flytrap enmeshed with liquid static. The green river you ignore is realized by the black river growing wings beneath the shoulder blades of the hatchling. Coleman Hawkins, who morphs with allular quills into a hawk. Dark patagial marks on underwings, present on all ages and races, conjured shadows beyond the last section of the long film. You're afraid of listening to this lady? He, too, with parade float head, eyes like flashing lindy hoppers, lunging with the lumpy fabric of the past, pushing a gauge, a deuce of blips, bloodstream, lush as a viper, is more righteous than scumpteen codification. In closing, sir, the reed was always remoistened while you were in the booth cutting the montage sequence. 
But the pink sequins of Bessie Smith, quenched with yielding limelight, disappear into dust like eighth notes. My button ejects and the tongue spits out the disc's rainbow. Empowered Cadaver, yes, Lewis Porter. <clears throat> Absolutely. <laughs> he who travels learns, Roma proverb. Django means I awake. This verdon wheels its wood spokes through scroll work indigos, and a transparent red stove glows by the blanket when a horse clops through the center of the moon, where Belgium is born, the Manouche the Macignons, to wake up in a caravan with a plower, viola, canvas-covered hatch means to exist. But if we exist at the frontier, robbing chickens perhaps, flirting with fayola, violet, or draca grape, and sloshing around in purple liquid. A hedgehog has barbed artichoke skin and hides under its anointed bush. Stuff him with rosemary, thyme, and wild garlic over a roasting pit through the clay, with lacho robin and a savory liver. To awake to see the window and the horse-drawn air. To awake to the dark musette and the purple valse. A hedgehog winds his piston by the chimney and Grappelli and Reinhardt screaming fragrant honey under the sky's purple canvas. The sound gets to be part of your body. Lester Young sleeping with his horns when Billy wasn't there. Black faucet, black suede. Django Reinhardt, the guitar Superman. His black mustaches sip the milk foam. No one listening to him turn a girl into a puddle has ever complained. Look to the side and he'll be there.
Disassembled parts of a bass clarinet. One. Aerophone, overblow, grenadilla, cylindrical bore, sassafras, contrabass, orange tiger, roar, Harry Carney, half hole, bitches brew, resin, cousin Mary, Eric Dolphy, grapefruit stew, rosin. Neither a dry sound nor the white rice paper mask, but swallowing the moon, the notes drink like grapes. The Newark photographer says that when he was a kid, there were 12 or 13 movie theaters downtown. Now only a tiny porn theater a spit's distance from the museum shows octaves of skin. Part of the lip stretches behind the knee, smooth as a mercury reissue, and the precipice glistening like a roll's glaze has been pushed up and down across Sarah Vaughan's ah noise at 235 in Body and Soul. The Dogon wear purple fringes, and their pearl millet sing vessels of donkeys, bearing caratidids, like the sandstone bandigara, all rectilinear with mass secured by the teeth. Four flutes roll off their center, the cakes filling, plastered, not a sigh exactly longer, are references to barbecued peaches. Wet and right al white and red altars catch clouds, is that what Braxton means? I shook hands with Elvin Jones and with Lawrence D. Butch Morris. The cavernous filaments of the downtown room like a limb soaking in a barrel. An article, an article said the amount of female granaries is an indication for the amount of women living in Guinea. Little Richard with his nougat-like pomade yelled the girl can't help it. Coltrane likewise said whatever he'd say about Eric Dolphy would be understatement. Newark's dry rot and magnesium flares show litter and the bare branches of a maple. Some looters return with armfuls of candy, Kool-Aid, and water guns. The late photo of Sarah Vaughn shows black triangles arranged like a Batman villainess. Years ago, her carefree loafers and red Parisian mime stripes swung easy. The liner notes reveal that she could have succeeded in the classical field. Wayne Shorter would say, what's happening? And she'd say, Newark, and that was enough, because you know what Newark does to people. Mel Torme reports that she kind of got huffy when he said operatic, and then she said, do you mean jazz isn't legit? You might say that powders are being crushed in the mortar, where some of the purple splays like limbs, the embracing limbs. 
For a while, poetry did not interest me with its flailing, corruption, boredom, obsequiousness, and general green color. It was a cloak used for taunting by everyone, assholes all. Flaubert thought the same thing about the bourgeoisie. Nothing is ever the same as they said it was. Blue lights of her hair, vertical, the gray pearls of her neck, delightful to the place, better or worse, where eyes penetrate. Bare forks, glitter, swan glasses, hiding among the bushes. Sort of feeling your way. Arbus said the hand is the cutting edge of the mind. Flawed animals, meat and buns and slaw. She sort of lifted up her hips so the rims of the bones were elevated, a sort of hand clasp of braided chestnut. Then a wordless moan like the pink tent you traverse. Rather than non-vocal to the bone, she pulled his shoulders forward, hovering. During rehearsal, the wordless word was loosely creased where the lowest part of the hip is hooked to the curve. Roland Kirk's no-tonic prez has a double meaning. The first note in the scale and the double gin Lester Young was drinking without quinine water. Circumference of lemon like the brim of the hat, blooming into focus in the film. I gathered dry kindling on the snowy mountain slope. White were the branches gathered in my hand. Wood has dropped its pieces with trees along the way, where the couple walks the trail inside the creamy sand. The bassist said the action on the bass was high, vertically so, so that the elastic boom made for instant decay. Threadgill says tubas can control the decay and attack. Tubas blend with everything, whereas the bass doesn't blend. Brass will cut through anything. You have to wait on the bass. A tuba player, he says, can shut it down because it's wind. The bass player said during a long jam he never gets a break. The glass of Pepsi has water already dripping down the side of the glass from the ice skating in the armful of warm air. A woman bends to pat a multi-striped cat, liquid gray, who prances between the aisles, listless and revolting with mystery. She loves the horrendous creature whose eyes glow yellow like a vial of Pernod. Its tail upright, plucking an E minor because the story has become more complicated than when we left the house. Miles played in Tokyo and then Berlin, former scorched sectors alighted in the terror bot scopes. In Tokyo, on March 9, 1945, we, Americans, burned to death 100,000 people in a single night, men, women, and children. On July 14, 1964, Sam Rivers channeled T-Bone Walker among the Velvet Echoes at Kosai Nankin Hall. The Dogon say that we should remember God has no external ears. She, cus she cups her hands. Babies are like water flowers who cool leaves from the tubs of their eyes. Our ways of living differ. Two, think of Swagger's on-off switch. Weldon Irvine said many of the young rappers got disconnected from a tradition of protest and decided to rap about mayhem in order to get paid. You can tell the political orientation of the bus driver by whether he says Lenox Avenue or Malcolm X Boulevard when he announces the stop. The large blue and white wheels slap the painted curb covered with slush. November 80. I walked to school not knowing how to play with. I decided, not unlike John Gilmore at Birdland 1956, to play Contra. We play against everything in the blaze of the hearth. We got the concept. We got the concept. We got conceptual. I'm on East 80th Street. The whir of pigeons have delicate lavender pockets around their eyes. They ground themselves in a spring of city dust as a pillowy aplomb among the air's granules. Of a city and its puzzle pieces, many-tongued, embraceable. Two men are dancing in a bar. It's 11.30 according to the wall's cold age Genesee beer clock. They're dressed in 1980 styles, velour and floppy existential caps. The shadows of the men's bodies are cast on the jukebox behind and their joy. What do you know about the forgotten ones? Try to understand the beautiful bodies peeling paint and upturned peaches from a Marxist perspective. Why this city, detritus, de denotations, and detonations. Why the snail shell, uncomfortable water, the caramel tone of Saravon, and the air is punctuated by wings. Instead of limbs, wings slice through at 80 degrees, assaulting through the sky's catapult, salted and polychrome. I'd like to be away from 1980 for a while and see its chemical pink stripping from the unfeeling dinosaur eye of the iridescent pigeons, another time from above or below. I will not take my father's footsteps. 
A miner's helmet with its bulb peers through the tack and driftwood. Around a wall, the light bounces on a mirror with its white cotton. You are encased in the city's steel tub. Washboard, scrap, empty grape drink bottle, frail, fall, literal, burnished. Do you feel the calm chewing the marrow from the gains the city has made? A half city moves along the mouth of a canal. You are living inside its corridors, breathing the air shaft smell of a fishbone. Your limbs reach across the threshold, down the hallway of metal doors. It is that multi-hued avenue that comes at the park's edge after a mollusk's snowdrift away from the window, mottled jams coated inconceivable rust, the pigeons' peppery throats blush like the sorcerers bending the tab rings of their cans, and all echoes. It is not only pushers and gathering places, storefront churches, crates of apples. We should not be east of the park, but no one knows we're here. If it is the paradise or the omni, swing along the velvet curtain of the sky. Beyond the rooftops, I see the families create a Father's Day picnic out of a card table, boombox, a ginger ale, boxes of chicken, a dominoes game clamped to a dude's lecture. I would run from the 125th Street station down the sustained line of the sidewalk and wait for the elevator that stops to raise its pulley and flywheel and drop my trapezoid body and race to the apartment to caress your hair or to let up or simply hold on. It is a familiar curvature. The place is a valley, the cathedral's east. The same streets reach out in the same places to open the same mirrored lobbies. We arrive at the place where the wife relaxes and folds her legs on the floor in conjecture at all the sidewalks traversed. She has me, a partner who knows that her memories are bubbles, that we see a far-fetched capital lift and break through tenements and wish like a creed we would travel along rifts and octaves to hear the doorbells and bird coos or feel the extraordinary orange of the Florida sun, a woman clutching an orange pill bottle, and we go along the snake-like namesakes and the keratin hooves of the city can always relieve us. We have people sitting around understanding the bubbles gloss anywhere the fragile numb inheritances answer the launching terrors. Her axes and closet doors she remembers. We will burst them all along. S. Ware Quartet, A Calm Despair is the Essence of Wisdom. This string, she's moved over an air current. Now they rewind a latex balloon in Newark like a vacated building. The place rebricked for chump dimes, its threnody's slicing hammer. These strings preach at a husting. Pluck your needs from their housings. Dive with your funnel to the back of the land in deep and fracture the unbodied air. 
spout thick blood for a ghost in hues of sickle-shaped jets. Listening to Cat Edmondson with R, Portis head in the car with N, but this quartet brings them back when the tenor's potato masher explodes above the trench. Klezmer bands used it when they eased themselves down from dark. Down, 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 down. Prospero broke his black staff and vainglorious light beamed out. The fairy light, slave light, Shalomo blue. Music foot flatted the New Englander barn. Moon thin and rumbled bass yeses and linnets and sounded out vanilla sugar. Quavers of coloraturas made tintinabulation al argondo as the valve trombone and guitar hush hush in the background and got cool, quiet, and waked the blues. Listen, listen, and the light come through. The sweet obsession bleeds from Singer. Singer is dead today and in the ground forever. How astonishing, his blue vapor is seeping, not consuming itself outward from his honey and body. He is buried in fine linen in the old style and his saxophone is engraved as a tiger lily. There was love in him. His love was not a wild stag, nor fragrant oils, nor hills of cinnamon. It was a light through the ocean, cool and content. He handed this poem to me and was gone, sifting up to the surface. All the passions of my organs are soft doorways. The garden turns inside out. One dream is white as a sky, one black and crowded as trees, each with a door, a rude odor, a reed. 
Remember him, darkest eyes, playing like hell in the mountains, love like that blue, making up in depth for what it lacked in brightness. We will not speak of love with him again. Antonia. And the lamp caught fire after he put a blue cashmere sweater over it, subtle as a Nance obligato on filmy violin, two brown curves and passant, purflings ease sound out of the stank of violin parts. Belly, waist, chin rest, ribs, sound hole, peg box, tailpiece, rounded shoulder. Ellington was an expert on them all. Billy Strayhorn would wake up, compose for four hours, would wake Duke, blood count or a ballad for very tired and very sad lotus eaters, for example, and he'd bring his golden torso up and finish off the rest of the composition. In the morning after composing all night, Duke would open the closet full of blue cashmere sweaters and his orchestra was playing the next morning. Plucky, plug ugly, Potsolana, porous and perfect blues. Daft down dilly ebullience, diabutsu ear, damselfish ectogenesis, Dardanelle's Edge, Dark Semiter Down, Demon Axe Ellipse, Desirous Empire, Dobelio Hippus, Dovetail Espalier, Salieri Eavesdrop Mozart playing a word sex game. Just then the creamy squeezing oboe, exalted unbolted, chemophila umbellata, plum beautiful music, the color of blonde night, red plum jam on pumpernickel, a Puerto Rican hermaphrodite putting on pink lip gloss. Wednesday night, Ellington, who could forfeel the slightest discolored saxophrage leaf easing between two rocks, heard through a catnap and half dozen chewed pencil tips, the baby green sweet pea billy exhale. Blue through blue dukedoms passed on to accept that place which comes to each of us alone.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, in the remaining time, I'd be happy to address any questions you have or we would, if there are any. Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a work of fiction, so it's a character, but similar to the writer. <laughs> but sometimes, uh, not a tribute per se, but sometimes in literature, rather than uh, confront unstable or unsavory or unpleasant topics, you could do it through a character or a mask or some type of device to increase the psychic distance between the writer and the subject matter. So this character can be killed off, he can do things that I wouldn't do. Or, right. And also the, the double play on the meaning of the word singer was just a useful device. So that's what that was. It's like Woody Allen, they always ask of that, is that based on your Yeah, Alvy Singer. From. But I mean, even more recent <laughs> films, like his films from the 80s and 90s, they always say, is that based on your life? He says, no, you could say that, but it's just based on somebody who happens to go out with younger women. <laughs> <laughs> One of them happens to be a student of his, or maybe a stepdaughter or something. Right. But uh, see, you could say it's a little like me, but it's not really, you know. But, <laughs> you know. Um, please use the microphone if you want to ask a question or comment so we can get you on the uh, 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 question. Raggy? Yes. I, want, I just want to say that I enjoy the music and the poetry done together. But this is a question for the cast. Is the, is, is the music um, original composition? I was trying to hear if there were any other things picked up from other songs, which I didn't hear. But I, I wanted to know if all the compositions were your own. I, I made up all of them just now, except for a few things. That, this one is kind of like a New Orleans blues. So even though I made it up, it's within a very set format. Yeah, and this was Body and Soul. And uh, this is really based on all of me, but I didn't really play it much. It really goes, uh, where does it go? But I didn't really play that. So um, it was all improvised, but for those three, I used uh, uh, song forms that I'm familiar with. The rest I just made up. And people sometimes tell me, they say, you should, some of those were pretty good. You should try and remember them and use them again. <laughs> so maybe I'll listen back and see. You have a few other you write questions. It down? Um, I, I mean, I, I do a lot of composing. In fact, I've, I've done everything from short jazz tunes to symphony orchestra works. So I do a lot of composing. It depends whether, if I think it was good enough to save, then I'll, I'll work on it and write it down. Yeah. Rob, you had a question? Yeah, are there other precedents for this kind of collaboration of a poet and a pianist like this, working together, reciting, and then playing? Well, there have been jazz poetry collaborations since at least the 20s. Uh, Langston Hughes, Hart Crane, Kenneth Rexroth, uh, Kenneth Patchen, uh, Kerouac, uh, and so on and so forth. But the two of us have done this a few times at various places. Cornelius Street once, and I think at Rutgers once. So there's a precedent. There's more locally. and more of it. My, my friend V.J. Iyer, who's a, lately a very successful jazz pianist, he uh, used to do a lot of that in the 90s. He doesn't do that much anymore, I don't think. He's getting a lot of gigs with his uh, own band now. But uh, the first time I saw him, he was playing with Amiri Baraka. Exactly. You know? But I will say this, that uh, the, the thing about the earlier days, through the 50s, a lot of times what the jazz musicians did with the poets is just played tunes that they had already rehearsed. So it's only more recently that you see people doing what we are doing, where I'm just kind of listening and trying to see what will go with that. You know, some of the older collaborations are really just preset tunes that they, that's, that's they just right. say, okay, we, here's a tune that we already play, so that might go well with this poem of yours, you know. So to actually improvise it all, all is uh, not that common, maybe. Yeah. No. I like the improvisation. 
accusation. The problem was that um, it was frustrating not to know all the words. So it was, it was something about the uh, the balance between the piano and the recitation. Yeah, but that's why I kept asking you yeah. if we had it. We well, could, it's we could an still, imperfect system. We could still work on that, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You have to scream more when you're reading your poems. <laughs> well, I would suggest something that you might not approve of, and that is reading the poems before having the, uh, the improvisation. You mean read it once and then That's once right. with the piano? That's right. What do you think of that idea? That's, we could do that. Some of them don't want to hear the poem twice, though. <laughs> How many people would like that idea of hearing the poem twice? Some people would like that. <laughs> How many people are too busy? This life is too short. They don't need to hear it twice. <laughs> Come on. You're busy, right? I understand. Uh, another option might be to put the piano further away from the poet and then, you know, spotlight on you and your, and your cell phone. Oh, well, the only <laughs> but thing I, is... I had a really hard time hearing Well, poem. in addition yeah. to that, the, just the logistics of the thing. I mean, they're very clearly dense, uh, complex, things that I've written, so even if I read it twice, I don't know. It might improve it a little, but I don't know how much that would do. For His me. poems are very erudite. You know, they reflect a lot of knowledge and a lot of knowledge of the history of poetry, so there is there's a lot of detail in them. It's not like poetry slam where they just kind of, you know, you, you, can, you can understand it the minute you hear it, you know. I have a question for each of you, though, because that wasn't a question. <laughs> um, in terms of um, you, when you uh, play the when you're playing the piano, uh, are you are you uh, improvising as you go along, or have you already read the poems prior to? Is this the first time you're hearing the poems? Yeah, it's it's a good uh, question. We actually talked about that because you know I have I have the book which won all, all the prizes, and I have a that what is that a chapbook that other thing of yours. Uh, so I have some of his poems. I've read them and enjoy them. I feel like I know something about poetry. Uh, I know something about the way poetry is structured and all this. But we actually talked about whether I should have the poems in front of me, because I certainly don't know any of the poems well enough that I'm, I would know them by heart. You know? so, uh, and we decided that could actually be distracting for me. So we decided not to do it that way. And essentially, I'm hearing the poems for the first time, because you know, I've read them once or twice, so it's not like I really know them. You know? And a question for Mr. Singer. Um, I read in your bio your process of uh, reading your poetry. Oh, all right. I read about I'll your... I'll accompany oh, yeah, her when, she, when she says the questions, okay? I read in your bio the process of your, of your uh, writing uh, poetry. Um, so as you take the... You write down little snippets of observations for a period of time, and then it comes to you. With that process, how many poems do you generate per year, would you say? Um, well, re the past several years, not as much because I've been writing a dissertation and doing other things, but I mean, I, ideally I would write as much as possible, but in my opinion, there are too many already. Too many so, poems? Yeah. Or too many of your poems? Well, in general, but I'd rather um, just be open to it and then have it come uh, when it comes. But, I, it, theoretically, I mean, this has not existed, but I would write every day. But in reality, I try to just do it as much as possible. I think maybe built into her question is the question, is that a, is that a slow process? Is yeah, oh, yeah, uh, yes, it takes years sometimes for a single poem. Wow. I'll work on it. And you'll come back to it. Yeah. yeah. I, w I wanted to make a comment about the difficulty understanding some of the words as you were reading. Uh, I read your book of poems twice and enjoyed the poems and found myself enjoying the poems in a different way, hearing them presented in this format. A and I felt that missing out on some of the words that you can get when you're reading and there's silence around you, this was a different experience in which, in a sense, getting all the words wasn't that important. And the sound of your voice was a kind of a music, and it was more notes <laughs> than, than semantic units. I think if you've, the verdict is still out on what I'm about to say, it's my opinion, but I think if you've missed the rhythm in a poem, you've missed the whole ship. I mean, 
the sound is what uh, it, the pleasure for the ear is really what I'm there for a lot of the times. So I like that, but I mean, not in all cases, in all times, I guess. Yeah, that's one I way to do it. I have a better idea. Everyone in the audience has to, has to buy the poems, yeah. <laughs> good one, huh? What do you think? Good, good? I think the, yeah. And one of my CDs, and then you play it together <laughs> when you get home. What the hell? Don't even stay for the performance. That's it. I'm going home. I mean, ideally, these would require multiple readings or whatever, but yeah. we do a, a kind of version of that. I have a two-part question, and I was wondering the structure of jazz, as opposed to the context, you know, of the um, the poetry. And I don't know much about the structure of jazz. Could you just give us a little bit, um, an introduction? Not this isn't fair, but I know classical music, but I don't know the structure. And does it go necessarily with the rhythm of the poetry? So we know the con and then the context, the subject. I'm going to ask that a little bit differently from the way you asked it, because um, first of all, in terms of structure, um, the thing about jazz is that you're improvising over a structure. The structures you're improvising over are not so different from classical music structures. So we'll talk about the first theme, the second theme, but we're improvising really on the harmonies of those themes. Uh, in jazz, we always say box Goldberg variations are closer to jazz than most uh, forms in classical music because he takes a harmony and does 32 amazing different ways of playing over that harmony. So that's kind of what we do. But I also do free improvisation because I am a composer also and I'm well versed in classical music. So some of the, one thing I did, I don't quite remember what it was, but it was kind of a Debussy kind of thing you might remember, something like... Uh, Built on. Debussy, you know, I'm thinking about Debussy. You know, Debussy was, a lot of composers will say he's the inventor of, of modern music, you know. A lot of composers, of, uh, uh, even Stravinsky said Debussy was like a god to him, you know. And uh, it's, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Stravinsky showed the Rite of Spring piano version that he was using, not the orchestral, but Stravinsky was playing it on the piano to accompany the dancers, and he showed it to Debussy, and Debussy sight read it. He said, oh, this is rather good, and Stravinsky was looking at him, you can read, you can read that at sight, you know? It was a whole new kind of music. But, um, so it doesn't really, I wouldn't really think about it that way, because the whole idea of Debussy is to get a sound that you like. And uh, he would use something that, I sometimes call them cluster chords. This one happens to be a diminished chord, this one happens to be a dominant chord. But it's, uh, it's, this is not jazz, you understand? So it's, you can't make that comparison. It's, it's a, when I, what, my point is when I do that, I'm not doing the jazz thing. I'm not taking a set harmony and improvising over it. I'm improvising the whole thing, including the harmony, in the style that, it happened to be a little like Debussy, it was, it was me, but it happened to be inspired by Debussy. It's like composition, but spontaneous composition. Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody can do that. I mean, I happen to be uh, very familiar with classical music, and I, I like doing that kind of thing. So I, that's different. That's not a jazz thing. I think with the poems also, I want to try to create a, it's artificial to some extent, but I create a situation that seems like it was inevitable, but also somehow spontaneous. The context. Uh, well, the way that it sounds, the way the lines are broken, um, et cetera. But the, the the subject, the context, do you address that? I try to, but I, I just want to say something about that, which is that most poets, not only poets, but almost anybody you accompany, whether it's, a, I've worked with dancers, you do things for film sometimes, uh, don't like it if you try to catch every nuance. Because then, uh, could you read, like read a when couple the, of you know, When it's thunder and he plays. Yeah, and you go. You don't want that. It's, you know, they don't like it if you go and try to, try to emulate everything. He says, then I heard the blues, and then I heard some thunder, but then it started to rain. You know, it sounds funny afterwards. It's like it sounds, the xylophone and there's a skeleton and... Yeah. 
it sounds silly. And, in, and, and by the way, in the film business, they used to call that Mickey Mousing. Uh, they, maybe they still do, because the idea is that in cartoons you do that, but you wouldn't do that in a serious thing. So, what I, so we have talked about that. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. So we have talked about that. And so what I try to do, uh, be, uh, what I was, uh, it's a little hard since I'm not so familiar with his poetry and some of them are things I hadn't read before. But certainly the ones I'd read before, as soon as I heard the beginning, I kind of had a sense, okay, is this a dark mood? Is it a light mood? Is it a blues? Some of them mentioned the blues, you know, this kind of thing. So in that sense, I try to do the overall mood of it, but not try to catch every little nuance, you know. And I was trying to play very softly behind him too with that, you know. With the soft pedal on. Yeah. I have uh, two comments. Uh, one is to combine, and you said make a CD, and you should combine it and make the poetry CD so we could take it with us. Good idea. And the second part was uh, a discount again. Discount for you. Since yeah, you yeah, had yeah, the idea. Two percent. Okay. Uh, the other part was, uh, like other people mentioning, your words were hard to pick up sometimes. And then you went into a kind of uh, Philip Glass melodic piece that tripped me out and I went to an altered state. And I saw then you I alter. <laughs> I noticed you altered when I played. I did. I, I went... Yes. Yeah. Something like that. And then I, I was able altered. to hear the words a lot clearer <laughs> since I went into an altered state. So. And then you could hear it better? Yeah, yeah. I dropped out and dropped in. So what's the problem, folks? Just alter. Come on. That's right. Well, play more altered music. Is that so hard? Come on. Yes. <laughs> You're all in Just trance. have an out-of-body experience. Take what's a deep the breath. problem? Hang on. Did you just finish your sheet Wait, let's see. Um, I don't it's think on the so. website, I think. Right, David? Yes. Well, there's a description on the announcement of your backgrounds and publications yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And my site is easy to remember, lewisporter.com. Do you have a site? No. He's too famous to have a site. So well, and I also uh, found myself drifting a lot in and out. And um, it, sometimes it felt like the, the reading was competing with the, with the music. And sometimes I... I Stop listening to the words without without meaning to, but then I'd come back and it would, I'm not sure what to say other than that I think that it would be interesting to study what people hear. You know how much I don't know how you do that, and that's not the question for Susie. But um, it's an interesting process the listening to both things, and sometimes you know I wonder why people either go into altered states or, or trip out into reverie. Um, what, what in the music, what in the poetry, what in their collaboration, I don't know, but I uh, just found myself thinking of all these things. It was very pleasurable um, all the time, whatever, notwithstanding what I say about feeling that they were in some instances competing for my attention. Um, you know, I went in, in good places. I always came back. I never felt like, gee, I missed something, although I'm sure I did. I missed a lot of the poetry. I don't necessarily feel that the language of the words sort of takes supremacy. I think there's a deliberate interaction and a kind of, as you described, it was better, but a give and take where you might hear that more certain moments. Or whatever. Yeah, and I think also, you know, maybe when we're really successful, you'll hear both at the same time, but that certainly would be different from person to person. And another thing is that you, but I am also doing certain specific things. Like you might notice, I don't do any of my fast stuff while he's reading. So certain rule, I just have certain rules for myself. Nothing really fast while he's reading. Some of those things. Right? But my idea of slow is probably most people's idea of fast. So I don't know. I do play a lot of fast notes. What if you kind of alternated? Would be another, yes. another way to do it, like yeah. you read a, a couple of the verses. Well, I did that with a with a uh, a band called the John L. Eric Kelso Quartet. It's on YouTube. Oh yeah, um, I, I recorded it John this summer. I yeah, they're know. they're like uh, they play. Uh, I don't know what you call it, Dixieland yeah. kind of style of music, but that's how we did it that time. Oh yeah. But I mean, I think he means like line by line almost. Well, yeah. With that, I don't remember exactly what happened. Not necessarily. 
And then I read, then they played, and we kind of did it that way. Well, you know, it, it, again, you know, it, it was my experience, which I, you know, didn't completely anticipate, that um, you felt more like a duet, as if it were two instruments, and one of the instruments was a vocal cord <laughs> vibrating, um, and and the sense of the poem wasn't important as important in this context as it would be in a different kind of context. Okay. Also, it's That's important to way. know that poems really should not or can't be paraphrased. I mean, you've got to sort of experience the whole poem to get the poem. You can't say, well, it was about, you know, the time I journeyed over to Ithaca and blah, blah. You know, it doesn't make any sense. That's you don't get point. it that way. Well, that's a good point, because the whole point is the words that you're using. It's like I always say Dickens is such an amazing writer of fiction. I say, you can, you can read the plot summary. If that's all there were to it, then there would no, be no point to write the novel, you know? So. Um, the writer spoke about working over the manuscript a great many times and changing things. But the pianist speaks about doing the uh, improvisation right on the spot and not necessarily being able to repeat it. Now, that's two very different views of how to perform this work. Now, would you be willing to write, it at, to write out the music and change it, keep changing it under different circumstances? Or is this what's unique about this presentation that you have a poem, let's say, that's been worked over many times, but a piece of music that hasn't been worked over many times? Well, uh, I mean, in that example, I think you're approaching sort of songwriting with musical accompaniment. I mean, mm -hmm. yes. like Cole Porter, for example, who, that we know his compositions, uh, Love for Sale, or whatever it was, you know, every time. But like summertime, another example. I read there's 25,000 different versions of it. Recorded versions. Yeah. Recorded versions of it, and each one is different. But they're all summertime, so that's how that would work. And also, I mean, a lot of these poems I wrote them maybe 10 or 15 years ago, so I have no clue what I was, what my mind was like at that moment. I don't know anymore. But occasionally, when I'm reading, I kind of take something out or change it or just and, to amuse myself. Um, yeah, amuse. well, that's good if you amuse yourself. But I would also say that um, that's a different thing. Since I do compose, we could certainly collaborate. I would say I'm going to write a setting of one of your pieces, either for, with a written out piano part or for a string quartet, you know, which could be great. Hey, you might like that. You know? And uh, on the other side, there are people who improvise poetry. But you can't improvise the same way that I couldn't write, I couldn't improvise work, some of my orchestral music. Uh, you couldn't improvise some poems that are very erudite. There's a certain kind of poem that you can improvise, which is, tends to be more on one level. It's not a multi-level poem where you have in the middle of it some kind of a reference to something that T.S. Eliot did. They tend to be more one-level poems and more direct and easy to understand. But there is such a thing as improvising poems. Also, when you're hearing it, you're really missing a major component, which is the lines. Poems, verses written in lines. There are prose poems, which is kind of a stupid name, but yeah. um, that a lot of the information is contained in that, where the line is broken and for what reasons, That's and true. so on and so forth. But um, just one comment. Um, generally, in, in uh, good poetry, relatively modern poetry, anyway, there's a feeling of spontaneity one feels as though the words were happening by themselves. Jazz is sort of similar in, in that uh, improvised jazz has that feeling of being spontaneous. Even if organized, it's, it's spontaneous. So I think uh, the collaboration is, is uh, very much equal in, in the sense that you have two media that are uh, associated with spontaneity and therefore create their own sort of spontaneous interaction as they happen. So um, I'm sort of not in favor of overworking and, and uh, over-preparing, because that would certainly kill I, the goose that's mm, laying the air. OK. So. That's a point to that. That makes sense. I guess our time is up. No, thanks. Thank you.